Right, <clears throat> I had to start it again because when I went to do the sound, the TV in the sitting room, which is also the same TV that you're watching, uh, the sound came on on there. Anyway, here we go. Chat assets of 32 billion. So whichever way you look at it, Silicon Valley Bank is large. It's meaningful. But the biggest impact, I think, in terms of what's happening right now is the loss of confidence in the sector. If this was an isolated incident and Silicon Valley Bank had no relationship with any other company or business, then you may say that it wouldn't have any impact. However, the fact that it's the second bank in the same week that's failed in the USA. You're watching and this it guy. Has links to all of these tech businesses. A lot of businesses Dual have blogs. all of their money on deposit at Silicon Valley Bank and they are going to lose the vast majority of that. So thousands of tech businesses that have tens of millions of dollars on deposit are now facing financial ruin. And of course, those companies are employing lots of people and they have relationships with lots of other businesses. So there is a huge interconnectivity here. So Silicon Valley Bank has relationships with other financial institutions. So you've got that link. You've then got the link through all of the tech businesses. And then the biggest issue is the loss of confidence in finance. When people read about a bank failing, it causes nervousness. It does, yeah. It causes people and companies to start thinking about where they got their money, whether or not it's safe, whether they should withdraw all of their funds. And if that then starts happening with other institutions, we could see a real domino effect here. We could see a lot of other banks failing. So Silicon Valley Bank is definitely relevant. It's definitely important. And as the second largest banking failure in US history, it definitely will have an impact on the financial markets. So you may be thinking that the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation have taken over Silicon Valley Bank, so there shouldn't be a problem. Now, this FDIC, and as he's about to say to you in this, they guarantee $250,000. Now, as he's about to say to you, what if you've got more? Well, that absolutely would be true. Well, that absolutely would be true if all of the customers of Silicon Valley Bank only had $250,000 on deposit because that amount is guaranteed by the FDIC. So everybody that has an account with Silicon Valley Bank will eventually get that money back. But unfortunately for the customers of SVB, the vast majority of them had significantly more than $250,000 on deposit. In fact, the problem. percent of the bank's $175 billion in cash deposits, as at the end of 2022, were completely uninsured. So that means that the customers of Silicon Valley Bank have over $155 billion of uninsured deposits. So potentially you all see the problem. could be lost. And when you think about $155 billion dollars, spread across all of these technology businesses. That is tens of thousands Itchy. of companies Damn. who've lost all of their money. These are potentially companies that were doing really well. They were doing so well that they were actually putting large amounts of cash on deposit at the bank, all of the money that they were generating. That's been wiped out. So if you put that into the context of your personal circumstances, that would be like you losing 89% of your net worth overnight. That's that scary, is isn't it? a catastrophic event for everybody involved. And that's why there's panic within the sector. That's why all these companies are now worried about how they're going to pay their bills, how they're going to pay their employees, whether or not they're still solvent, or if they now have to go into liquidation. And if they go into liquidation, obviously that has a knock-on impact to all of the companies that they deal with. But even the money that's insured by the FDIC may not become available immediately. So if companies need cash overnight, they may be struggling to access that cash. And so we could see liquidity crises cropping up with tens of thousands of businesses over the course of the next few weeks. And this is only likely to fuel the panic in the sector further and lead to more companies thinking about withdrawing all of their money from other institutions. So it's very possible that we could see runs popping up at various institutions over the course of the next few weeks. So if the failure of these two banks does cause contagion in the sector, if we start to see a collapse of the financial system, how quickly will it take effect? Well, in order to answer that question, I thought it was worth... This is the nitty gritty of crisis, what is on about. Which was the biggest collapse in the financial markets that we've seen over the course of the last 50 years. 
Now, in terms of the landmark events, that one was of the big. first big failures in the USA was investment bank Bear Stearns, which found itself on the brink of... But there's a bigger one coming. Much bigger. However, it was actually bailed out following an acquisition by JP Morgan on the 14th of March 2008. Now, in terms of the knock-on impact of that failure... Yes, the, the big one. Event ...was actually in September 2008. So a full six months later, when the US government bailed out mortgage lenders Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They now, didn't have a choice. Later, on the 15th of September, the most famous event of the global financial market was the failure of Lehman Brothers, which filed for bankruptcy with assets of around $600 billion. That's now, a massive Lehman amount Brothers of money. did trigger a full financial collapse all around the world. And we saw multiple governments having to step in and underwrite their banking sectors and bail out various financial institutions. However, it took a very long time for everything to feed through in the financial system. In 2008, 25 banks failed in the USA. In 2009, another 140 banks failed in the USA. In 2010, a further 157 banks failed. In 2011, another 92 banks failed. And in 2012, a further... Now, what's on about these banking failures, right? If you have your life savings in a bank in America and you've obviously been listening where the FDIC guarantees a set amount which is $250,000 here's the thing you're possibly going to lose and lose big style now at all of them banks which you, you saw at the very beginning because obviously I watched this from the beginning and the, the nitty gritty is on the time bar where it says global financial crisis and it's just at the end of the S on that but the thing is this that even with crypto there's a crush there as well and the crush is from the likes of the what do they call it again the securities and exchange commission but not just that there are other major like players in the field and the point I'm making is this, you know, if we like have money in these different places and what do we do now? Do we spread the load? So like we make sure we have a set amount in each bank so that we kind of send out the lifeboats do you know what I mean? And this is one of the things where even here in the UK, we had uh, the Northern Rock where people were queuing up. And it just makes you wonder. I mean, the contagion from America, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of the richest countries in the world. But as I say, when this sort of thing happens, it makes you wonder. So anyway, I'm going to continue it on. 51 banks failed. So the ripple impact of the global financial markets took a long time to feed through. And if we put that into the context of what's happening now, this chart shows the number of bank failures dating back to 2014. And you can see that since 2018, there's only been a handful of cases. And over the course of the last three years, the only official failure that we've seen is Silicon Valley Bank. Silvergate Bank is closing, but it's going through a voluntary liquidation. So it won't register on this chart as a collapse. So it will be very interesting to see what happens over the course of the next 12 to 18 months, whether or not we start to see a rapid increase in the number of bank failures. And if we do, as we've seen from the global financial crisis, this won't be a short term impact. If we start to see banks failing, it's likely that it could last for a number of years. Yeah, that'd be scary. So what's the summary and conclusion today. 
Well, I wanted to post this video really to establish exactly what the reasons for the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Silvergate Bank were, and then to look into whether or not there was a risk that other financial institutions could experience. Now he's on about um, Silver Bank, the Silvergate Bank, there, and one of the key parts of that is they have a system. It's called sen and sen is the connection between fiat currency and digital currency and the amount on their books was gigantic the issue was these bonds where they were putting large amounts of money into the bonds which are locked for like 10 years or above. And what crushed these was when they raised the, the rate. And they raised the rate because they um, inflict the... I think they call it hyperinflation, was uh, apparently getting out of control. So the Fed and others in America turned around and said that, right, we'll, we'll, we'll raise the rates. And, you know, it's had a knock-on effect not just in America, here in the UK too. And because of that, the money that you've got in your pocket, well, whether you like to admit it or not, that's shrinking. So... The same problems, and whether this could escalate into a wider global financial crisis. And what we've established today is that there were two main drivers for the failure of these banks. The first relates to what's happened to interest rates over the course of the last three years. During the COVID pandemic, we saw interest rates fall to their lowest levels in history, and that obviously had a direct impact to the yield that was being offered on bonds. Now, over the course of the last 12 months, we've seen a complete reversal of that situation. Interest rates have risen rapidly, and that's forced down the price of bonds. And the problem for both of these banks is that they have put a lot of their capital into bonds, which are now out of the money. So the movement in interest rates exposed both of these banks to risk. And the reason that that risk was capitalised was because there was a run on customer deposits. The customers of both of these banks became worried about the viability of the bank and therefore tried to withdraw all of their deposits. And as word started to spread, those withdrawals became a run and that caused a liquidity crisis at both banks and ultimately led to their demise. So the big question is, will this have a knock on impact for the financial markets? And the answer is that it's highly likely that other institutions are going to experience the same problems because any bank that's been investing in the capital markets over the course of the last three years is likely to have exposure to these bonds and therefore True. Will be out of the money. And if those banks are then put under financial pressure because there's a run on withdrawals, they will be forced to sell those bonds at a at, loss. At, they yeah, will at a loss. That loss. The announcement of that loss will then lead to a further drop in confidence amongst all of the customers, which will then lead to more withdrawals, causing the bank to sell. By the way, before anybody asks, no, I am not a financial expert. All I'm doing is these articles are interesting because it's to do with finance and finance is to do with the money that's in your wallet etc so i'm no financial expert don't suppose i ever will be but like i say the reason why is because this is hurting a lot of people anyway thank you very much for watching this video the guy is joe blogs as you can see uh it's 18 minutes ago that's on YouTube where I am and um, just because it's in America 
do not think that it doesn't affect you. And that's my key point. Because this will have a knock-on effect. And what we don't want is what happened 2008 onwards. Where businesses employing lots and lots of people are crushed. Anyway, thank you very much for being at this point of the video. Much appreciated.